fighting continues in southern Lebanon with reports of more rockets fired into Israel by Hezbollah militants. Explosions have also hit Beirut. The Israeli army says it has hit more than 180 Hezbollah targets in Lebanon in the past 24 hours. The military also published this video of its troops operating in southern Lebanon. An Israeli commander was reported to have been killed in an exchange of fire. Hezbollah earlier claimed it repelled two attempts by Israeli soldiers to cross into Lebanon. Now, this all comes as Israeli forces have opened a new front in the conflict. That's along Lebanon's Mediterranean coast. And journalist Karim El Gohari joins us now from Beirut. Hi, Karim. Uh, what is the latest there? Very difficult to get an independent picture about what's going on, especially the ground offensive uh, in the Israeli ground offensive in the south. But there seems to be uh, serious clashes. Uh, we had uh, something very symbolic. We had a picture of uh, Marun el Ras. This is an area very close in, uh, from the Israeli border within, uh, uh, within Lebanon, where the Israeli army had set up an Israeli flag. Now, at the very same place, uh, Hezbollah says that they were striking back on this unit that was entering there, that there were also uh, casualties or people injured, at least, on the Israeli side. Now we have just uh, right now news that one of the injured uh, seems to be one of the advisors of uh, Israel's Minister of Finance, uh, Smodrich. There are also, uh, uh, the Israeli army seems to concentrate more to the western side, towards the Mediterranean coast, and we have uh, airstrikes uh, in um, the Beka Valley in the east, and uh, two strikes uh, overnight uh, in Beirut, uh, one of them in uh, the Palestinian camp Burj Barajne, both of it in the south of the city. Uh, Burj Barajne, for example, is an area where there is not only Palestinian living, but also a lot of Syrian refugees, refugees and many people who don't have the financial means to pay expensive rents in the other parts of Lebanon. But most of these people in the last days have left this area. And Karim, for the first time since October the 7th, Hezbollah seems to not be linking a ceasefire with Israel to a truce in Gaza. What should we make of that? Maybe not too much. I mean, th this was not explicitly said. It was just not mentioned that he was talking about that Hezbollah is endorsing uh, the Lebanese government trying to negotiate a ceasefire, but in the very, very same speech that was much more directed to the own to, its, to Hezbollah's own supporters, uh, Naim Qasim, who is now the public face uh, uh, of uh, Hezbollah, used to be the deputy of uh, Hassan Nasrallah, he gave a very defined speech. Uh, he was talking about uh, uh, resistance, and uh, he was talking about uh, that uh, Hezbollah will try to displace more. Uh, Israeli people in the, uh, living in the north, basically trying to spoil the war goal of Netanyahu, who is saying he just escalated uh, all the events in order to bring civilian Israelis back to the border. So uh, Hezbollah seems to be extremely defiant, on the other hand, in this speech, although they were saying they are endorsing uh, efforts by the Lebanese government for a ceasefire. Kareem, we'll have to leave it there, but thanks so much for that update. That's Kareem El Gohari in Beirut. You're welcome. From the Lebanese capital, Beirut, I'm now joined by DW's Mohamed Trey. Tim Mohamed, what's the latest? So more Israeli airstrikes have hit uh, Beirut's southern suburbs and Baqa uh, region overnight as the cross-border shelling between Hezbollah and Israeli army along Lebanon's southern border uh, has uh, continued. Hezbollah has put out a statement saying that uh, it carried out uh, 16 operations against uh, northern Israel uh, yesterday as the group uh, vice chief uh, vowed to keep uh, fighting. He said, uh, quote, uh, it is um, uh, now a battle of who uh, cries first and we will not uh, cry. Uh, yesterday, images of uh, Israeli troops raising the uh, Israeli flag on the, the rubble of a building in the outskirts of uh, Maroon Ras, uh, right on the Lebanese-Israeli border, uh, was uh, a talk of the town here in, in Beirut. It was then explained by Hezbollah uh, uh, as a very minimal uh, Israeli 
uh, advance inside uh, Lebanon as um, uh, the party says the ground, the, the Israeli ground invasion uh, or inclusion uh, remains hardly underway. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the Lebanese people last night. Let's have a listen to what he said. You have an opportunity to save Lebanon before it falls into the abyss of a long war that will lead to destruction and suffering like we see in Gaza. It doesn't have to be that way. Each of you can take a step for your future, even a small step. You can make a difference. The Israeli Prime Minister there, Mohammed, what has the reaction been to the statement? Well, Netanyahu is not well received here in, in Beirut. Israel's prime minister is obviously building on the uh, political divide uh, in, in Lebanon, especially concerning Hezbollah and its uh, strategic decisions uh, of joining the fight in, in Gaza, uh, which is widely seen here uh, as a deadly mistake that the militant group did. Uh, uh, this, you know, escalating con uh, conflict is... Uh, further dividing the Lebanese uh, uh, on strategic political lines, but that doesn't eliminate the fact that uh, there's a general consensus, a, a general mood here in Lebanon that Israel is an enemy state and uh, whatever is said by Israeli officials, uh, even though it, it uh, rings some bells sometimes, it makes some sense, uh, it is still not well received by uh, the vast majority of the Lebanese. For the first time since October 7th, Hezbollah seems to not be linking a ceasefire with Israel to a truce in Gaza. What should we make of that? Yeah, so, so, so there has been uh, an ongoing uh, discussion over the past uh, few days where we, we heard uh, uh, this first from the Lebanese foreign uh, minister when he said that Hezbollah's chief Hassan Nasrallah had agreed to a ceasefire in Lebanon regardless of the uh, events and the situation in, in Gaza before he was killed uh, by Israel. And then uh, we could sense a change in, in the tone of Hezbollah's officials uh, and uh, uh, members of parliament uh, over the last uh, few days uh, towards a a possible uh, unlink between uh, both fronts in Lebanon and, and Gaza by, uh, uh, you know, saying that the priority is now for a ceasefire in, in Lebanon and that, uh, again, we heard this, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, by uh, vice, the, the Hezbollah's vice uh, chief yesterday, uh, who spoke for the second time uh, mm -hmm. uh, last week. And between the lines of his speech, we could uh, sense clearly that he's showing readiness to negotiate a deal in Lebanon, um, regardless of uh, the continuing war in, in Gaza. A deal that surely many Lebanese people would like to see at this point. That is DW's Mohammed Shreita in Beirut. Thank you so much.